Hello! This June I posted a video discussing the 2018 i7 Mac Mini Thermal Performance. I posted that video because I wanted to warn other Mac users that MX4 and similar compounds pump out and may cause thermal issues as soon as three months after the thermal pace is refreshed. This video is my three month follow up on the IC Diamond Thermal Paste Performance. The results may surprise you. Keep watching! Before we begin, I'd like to address a few comments that I received on my last video. In that video, I tested the IC Diamond Thermal Pad, and comments mentioned that I use both the Thermal Paste and the Thermal Pad together. I believe those comments came from this video clip. If you look closely, I have a small dot of Thermal Paste on two corners outside of the CPU die area, and this was only done to help hold the Thermal Pad in place during reassembly. This paste was not interfering with the CPU die. Ultimately, the pad did not work on the Mac Mini because there is a gap between the CPU and the heatsink, and the thermal pad does not fill that gap. Some people recommend multiple layers of the pad, however I did not try this in my testing. Let's quickly review my observations and recommendations. As mentioned, thermal pads cannot be used with the 2018 Mac Mini due to a gap between the processor and the heatsink. However, they may be a great alternative to thermal paste for other Apple computers where the heatsink makes direct contact with the CPU die. Apple takes a lot of flack for dried out thermal paste, however this seems to be done intentionally. Instead of the paste being the issue, I believe it might be with how the thermal paste is applied. If you have a bad application of thermal paste, you will see benefits from repasting your Mac. I will not take responsibility for your actions. If you have an i7-2018 Mac Mini and your thermals are similar to mine, I'd recommend not repasting your Mac. I'd also recommend cleaning the dust from your heatsink and fan on a yearly basis. Notice the maximum processor speed for non-AVX workloads is 4.3 GHz when all six cores are under load. This is not thermal throttling. These are the maximum operating frequencies for this processor by design. Now, let's take a look at the results. The first group of tests are with Cinebench R20, and I believe the results are outstanding. In my opinion, these tests are within margin of error between multiple test runs. Looking at the power utilization, the processor averaged about 3 watts less. However, the cumulative power consumption was only about 60 milliwatts less. Here, the maximum processor frequencies are within 70 megahertz of when the paste was fresh. The package temperature and average maximum CPU temperature are within 3 degrees of fresh paste, and similar to the stock thermal paste when it was one year old. These next group of tests were run using Intel PowerGadget version 3.7.0. This was the AVX256 test with all cores set to maximum frequency. The performance is identical to the fresh IC Diamond paste, and the performance is still better than the stock thermal paste. The minimum and maximum frequencies are within margin of error. And here's a look at the temperatures. Thank you for joining me on an adventure down the Mac Mini Thermals rabbit hole. I've learned a lot and I hope you did too. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment with your thoughts or experience. I'd love to hear from others who've tried this. I'd also love to hear from other i7-2018 Mac Mini users who are still using the stock thermal paste. Take care and thanks for watching.